Okay, um, 11.5, well, angle relationships and circles. We're going to learn to find the measure of angles formed by lines that intersect circles. Before we do that, we're going to do a quick review question. Uh, we want to find the value of this angle x right here. Um, from you following this dotted line, that telling, that's telling me that this arc is 200. So that would mean that this other arc over here would be 360 minus the 200. So then x would come out to be 160 degrees. Okay. Now, um, looking on to something like number 2. All right. Um, same idea from here to here is 140. Going to this part is 170. So if I add those two, we get 310. So this part is going to be 360 minus 310, which is 50. So x is going to actually be half of 50 because this is an inscribed angle. This was called a central angle. So remember the difference between the two. Okay, so half of 50 is going to be 25, so x is 25 degrees. All right, which is going to bring us up to the new theorem for today. If you have a secant and a tangent that intersect at the point of tangency, then the measure of each angle formed is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So... Looking at example three, um, here's my tangent, here's my secant. Okay, so if I go from this point to this point, that's the intercepted arc, which is this value x. So I know that the angle is half the arc. So for x, I guess 30 would be equal to half of x. So to do that, I'd multiply both sides by 2. So x would be 60. All right, looking at number 4, I know the angle, 89, is equal to half the arc. Okay, so again, I'm going to let me write it this way. Angle is half the arc. So I need to get rid of this half, which means I have to double both sides. So 2 times 89 is equal to 11x plus 2. And 2 times 89 is going to be 178. If I subtract 2 from both sides, I get 176. Divide by 11, I'm going to get that x is 16. All right. The next type of problem is if you have two secants that insect, intersect in the interior of a circle. That's going to be important. If it's in the interior, then the measure of the angle formed is half the sum of the measure of the arcs intercepted by the angle and its vertical angle. Okay. So I'll show you a picture, an example of what that means. All right. So here's my two secants. Technically, secant would be going actually past the circle. So you could say secant or chord. All right. But this is the angle that it's asking about. Notice that the vertex is inside the circle. So to find x, it's equal to half the two arcs. So my arc, I have one that's 70, and I have one that's 30. So x is half of 100, which is 50. All right, next theorem. If two secants, and I guess to be a little more precise, we could also say chords. 
If two secants, a secant, and a tangent, or two tangents intersect the exterior of a circle, so notice exterior, then the measure of the angle formed is half the positive difference of the measure of the intercepted arcs. The positive difference is in caps because that's important as well. Okay. Usually what we would do here is we would say the larger arc minus the smaller arc. Okay, so we want to make sure that that's, um, that's how we get the positive difference. We want the larger minus the smaller. Major, minor, you get the idea. Okay, so looking at example six right here, notice that my angle, my vertex is outside. It's in the exterior of the circle. So this intercepted arc here is 150. We actually have to find the other part over here, which is kind of why we did that review. So we're going to have to do 360 minus 150, and we get uh, 210. So this arc on this side is 210. So in order to use this theorem, my angle, my x, is going to equal 1 half the larger arc minus the smaller arc. Okay, 210 minus 150 is going to give me 60. X is half of 60, which is going to be 30. All right, let's look at number 7. Um, again, this is an exterior angle because the vertex is on the outside of the circle. So that means that angle is equal to half the larger arc minus the smaller arc. Right, again, to get rid of this half, I'm going to have to double both sides. This will be times 2. So 40 times 2 is equal to 150 minus x. This becomes 80 is equal to 150 minus x. If I subtract the 150 from both sides, I get negative 70 is equal to negative x. Divide by a negative 1, we get that x is 70. Okay. Uh, number eight. Same idea. Notice, look at where the angle's at. It's on the exterior. So that means x plus 25, that's my angle, is equal to one half the larger arc minus the smaller arc. So that is going to be 4x plus 5 minus 50. So x plus 25 is equal to 4, 1 half, 4x minus 45. Multiply both sides by 2. Here you have to be careful because you're going to actually have 2x plus 25 in parentheses. I guess I should have put those parentheses on there. Um, and then this becomes 4x minus 45. So I'd have to distribute. 2x plus 50 is equal to 4x minus 45. If I move my x around over here, I'm going to get 4x minus 2x, which is 2x. Then I would move this minus 45 over to the left, which I'm going to have to add 45. 50 plus 45 is going to give me 95. Divide by 2, and that is going to give you 47.5. All right. And then at the end, I went ahead and kind of gave you, I guess, a summary of these different theorems. If the angle's at the center, it's equal to the arc. If the angle's on the circle, maybe we should put vertexes on the circle. If the vertex is on the circle, it's half the arc. It's equal to half the arc. If the angle is on the inside, and we can also do the same thing. We can say the vertex. If the vertex is on the inside, it's equal to one half the intercepted arcs, the sum of the intercepted arcs. If the vertex is on the outside, the angle is equal to one half the larger arc minus the smaller arc. Okay. 